Now, we want to talk about how U.S. foreign policy could change under President Trump. Here to discuss that is Jamie Metzl, a senior fellow at the Atlantic Council. He joins us now here live from New York. And so interesting to me that just a few months ago, you were in Taiwan, you met with the president. I'm sure you could not have foreseen this, or, or could you? I mean, when, when we look at how perhaps a Trump administration would rearrange everything in the Asia Pacific, you know, you've written that perhaps there are opportunities there, but that Donald Trump isn't going about it necessarily the right way. That's exactly right. Uh, the relationship, the triangular relationship between the United States, Taiwan, and China is very, very complicated, and it's very delicate. And there have been times when it's even approached war, either between uh, China and Taiwan, or even between uh, a skirmish uh, between uh, China and the United States. And it's been maintained by this very delicate dance. And part of this is maintaining a little bit of a fiction of the status of Taiwan and some uh, language, special language, that we've negotiated over decades. And if the United States and if the incoming Trump administration wants to reposition the United States strategically in Asia, by all means, we should do it thoughtfully and strategically. But doing it through late night uh, tweets that don't seem to be connected to any coherent uh, strategy seems to me a very, very dangerous and short-sighted way to do it. You know, Jamie, we're looking at pictures now of you with that meeting in Taiwan. As I understand it, John Huntsman, the former U.S. ambassador to China, was also in that delegation. I mean, so yes. much to talk about here. How do you think, if he were selected for Secretary of State, and that's still a long shot, the list is long, how would he reshape um, Trump's foreign policy? So. The bad news is that so far, President-elect uh, Trump has really, in my view, mishandled U.S.-China relations. The good news is that now that John Huntsman is on the list of potential picks for Secretary of State, we have someone who is probably one of the top China and Taiwan experts in the United States. And bringing somebody like that into the team, I think, would go a long way towards making everybody in uh, the region feel a lot calmer about the future. You know, a lot of what we've seen, a lot of the sentiment running around President-elect Trump is the fact that they don't want to do anything business as usual. The administration does it, and they believe that is echoing a sentiment that comes from voters. As far as you can see, would it be best, I mean, how can you tell them to first calculate the consequences of changing those policies? Because it seems right now that we've got some actions, some very controversial actions, but not a lot of thought through in terms of what it would all lead to. What is the end game here? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, the, the election has clearly shown that many people in the United States are uncomfortable with business as usual. But that doesn't mean that we should just take a hammer to business as usual, because the world exists in a delicate and, in many ways, dangerous balance. And so if we're going to change, if the United States is going to change its policy, there are consequences. And it doesn't mean we shouldn't change. It just means we need to think strategically. And the case in point um, here with, uh, with Taiwan, there are a lot of things uh, that China could do in response uh, to this somewhat provocative act by President-elect Trump. And if China takes some of those actions, uh, for example, uh, by pressuring uh, some of the 22 countries who are currently recognizing Taiwan to unrecognize Taiwan, or even more aggressive actions, as were mentioned in your report, the United States will be in a very difficult position of deciding how important is Taiwan to the United States relative to North Korea, relative to Boeing's ability to sell airplanes in China and to all these other things. And at the end of the day, China probably cares more about Taiwan than the United States does. So it feels good. It feels like if you just attacking somebody or, or making these kinds of statements through Twitter, it feels good on some emotional level. But if the United States is being positioned for failure uh, down the line, that's not being tough. That's being stupid. Yeah, it's such a good point, Jamie, especially when you've got national security advisors saying that the main threat to the United States is North Korea. One of the only levers of power you have in North Korea is China. Very delicate balancing act that we hope the Trump foreign team looks at. Jamie, thanks so much for coming in. We appreciate it. My pleasure. It. Now, caught in